Hello everybody, it's the Shark Scrapper. I am responding to some viewer requests to do a little deep dive into the world of MLCCs. So come on, let's dive in and learn a bit more about these. All right, so first of all, it is way beyond the scope of this video to talk about what capacitors are, how they're measured, what they do on the circuit boards, those kind of things. What we're going to focus on in this video is how do you identify the MLCCs. Let's talk about the magnetic versus non-magnetic MLCCs, all from the perspective of what we as scrappers in the e-waste world need to think about. Here you see the classic MLCC structure. It's a monolithic ceramic block with comb-like electrodes that are centered in it in the manufacturing process. And then it has end caps uh, that form the connections to the outside world. Now we can find MLCCs on all manner of electronic equipment. They were introduced back in 1961 and have steadily grown in popularity and capability over time. Uh, the market in 2019 was about $9.93 billion dollars with 3.94 trillion units being shipped. Uh, the suppliers are all, as you might expect, Asian-based for the most part, right, with Japan producing 53% of the MLCCs used in the world, Taiwan 20%, Korea 19%, and China 7%. Uh, and the key market drivers, as you might imagine, uh, smartphone technology and the introduction of 5G is going to continue to drive this market. Here we see the construction and where the name multi-layer ceramic capacitor comes from. Uh, you can very clearly see that within the MLCC there are ceramic layers separating the electrodes. So MLCC multi-layer ceramic capacitor. Now, each of those electrodes are connected to the outside world via a connecting terminal. Now, what gets interesting, and the reason why some are magnetic and some are non-magnetic, is because the materials used in the electrodes and the connecting terminals. Recall I said that MLCCs were introduced in 1961. Well, by the mid to late 90s, manufacturers were experiencing a lot of pricing pressure on silver and palladium, so they were looking at some way to introduce a lower cost MLCC. Now, this is when BME or base metal electrode MLCCs were introduced, where the electrodes were no longer silver and palladium, but nickel copper. And the terminations were nickel copper tin instead of silver nickel tin. The result was that these BMEs are more magnetic than the PME or NME precious metal electrode or noble metal electrode. Now, unfortunately, the base metal electrode uh, MLCCs were not quite as stable as the NMEs, so you're still going to find both being used today. Um, NMEs are very stable over temperature range, but they're very expensive. The BMEs actually provide more capacitance for volumetric efficiency, uh, but they're not as stable. So different uses, different applications, but the BMEs are much more prevalent in today's electronics than the more expensive NMEs. All right, so here you see a line of MLCCs, and this will be a mix of the noble metal electrode or precious metal electrode and base metal electrode type or magnetic, non-magnetic type. And we're going to go ahead and run a magnet over them. In the background there is E-Waste Ben. He is, uh, that's, that's his latest uh, Scrap Marathon uh, episode. All right, so I'm gonna take my neodymium magnet here. That's about a quarter inch leg. So these are, this is about a quarter inch above. And as we get close, you see the MLCC is jumping right up there. And then every now and then I just take and drop them off into the magnetic bucket. Little tiny bucket. 
So far, no non non magnetics on that one. Now you know how you decide to do this. Uh, all what works best for you. I'm just doing this to try to make make it easier for you to see the MLCCs collecting on the magnet. Uh, you might want to dump all of yours out on a big piece of paper or wood or platform of some sort, piece of plastic, and um, so that you can you know, go through the pile more efficiently. So, you know, what's interesting to me is with MLCCs being introduced around 1961 and the... Um, lesser or the base metal types being introduced uh, in the late 90s, you know, there's a good period there where they were using the noble metal, precious metal, silver, palladium, uh, silver palladium in the MLCCs exclusively. Uh, and, um, oops, where did you guys come from? Well, let's see. I have a feeling you were just some magnetic ones that popped off when I was cleaning the magnet. Let's see. All right, so, uh, so what we can do now as e-waste people, if we are going to collect MLCCs, we can now make uh, an informed guess. If we're looking at a board that is from, uh, you know, the uh, 60s, 70s, 80s, then the MLCCs are probably going to be uh, precious metal or noble metal, the silver and palladium. If we're looking at boards from the late 1990s on, then we have to ask ourselves, would there have been a reason for the manufacturer to use a higher class MLCC? Um, and if so, then we can pull the MLCCs and check them. I'm going to go ahead and separate a few more here while we talk about another very important aspect of separating magnetic from non-magnetic. And that is, what are you going to do with the MLCCs that you collect? Yes, there's silver and palladium in the non-magnetic MLCCs. Are you going to try to refine out, separate out that silver and palladium? If so, do you understand the chemistry, the acids involved, and the expense of that material versus the silver and palladium? Are you going to have some place to sell that silver and that palladium? Maybe you're just going to sell the MLCCs to someone else who can go on and do it themselves, and that's fine. And then you want to really make sure that your MLCCs are non-magnetic. But this is a very important question to answer, just like anything we do in e-waste. What are you going to do with the product that you end up with? Go ahead and let us know down in the comment section what you're doing with your MLCCs. Are you collecting, not collecting? Have you separated them? Are you going to separate them now that you've learned more about this? If you enjoyed this video, there's some links here for some more of my e-waste videos. And don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. That's that button in the lower right. I will see you all on the next one.